Hello and welcome to Point All View. This week has been upper stage carnage. One after the another we have had three upper stage failures in a span of three days. First it was Issa's Ariane 6 debut rocket. Then it was the Chinese commercial rocket Hyperbola 1 and now by far the Safets and most successful of all rockets in human history, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket that got hit with an engine explosion nearly an hour into the flight. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. The engine on the upper stage of a SpaceX Falcon 9 malfunctioned during the July 11th launch, causing the potential loss of a batch of Starlink satellites and creating repercussions across the space industry that is still dealing with the shock of this failure. The Falcon 9 lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California at 10.35 p.m. Eastern Time. The rocket was carrying 20 Starlink satellites. 13 of these satellites were carrying the cutting-edge direct-to-cell payloads, on a mission designated Group 9-3 by SpaceX. The rocket's ascent to orbit appeared to go as planned, all the flight stages seemed nominal, with the first stage making a typical drone ship landing. However, during the first burn of the second stage, some keen observers noted an unusual buildup of ice on the cover around the Merlin engine. A phenomenon that had never transpired before. At the moment, that buildup, which had never been seen on typical Falcon 9 launches, did not appear to affect the stage's performance. The stage was scheduled to perform a one-second burn of the engine 52 minutes and 20 seconds after liftoff to reach a circular orbit, followed by the deployment of the Starlink satellites. SpaceX ended its launch webcast by this point. Later, the company and its CEO Elon Musk confirmed the anomaly. In an ex-post, formerly known as Twitter, SpaceX said, during tonight's Falcon 9 launch of Starlink, the second stage engine did not complete its second burn. As a result, the Starlink satellites were deployed into a lower than intended orbit. SpaceX has made contact with five of the satellites so far and is attempting to have them raise orbit using their ion thrusters. About two hours after liftoff, Elon Musk said in a spirit social media post that, upper stage restart to raise perigee resulted in an engine IUD, or rapid unscheduled disassembly, for reasons currently unknown. IUD, is SpaceX jargon for, rapid unscheduled disassembly, or simply an explosion. He said, Starlink satellites were deployed, but the perigee may be too low for them to raise orbit. We'll know more in a few hours. Noted astronomer and spaceflight expert Jonathan McDowell estimated that the launch placed the upper stage on an initial transfer orbit of 138 by 295 kilometers before the second circularization burn. The timing of the engine anomaly during this brief burn will determine the satellite's perigee and whether they can avoid immediate re-entry. Whether it is considered a partial or total failure, the incident is the first failure for a Falcon since a September 2016 pad explosion during a pre-flight test destroying the rocket and its communications satellite payload. The last in-flight failure of a Falcon 9 was in June 2015, when the upper stage broke apart during the launch of a Cargo Dragon spacecraft. Falcon 9 has built up an impressive track record of success since then. To give you an indication of its reliability, this was the 354th launch of a Falcon 9. The June 2015 in-flight failure was the 19th Falcon 9 launch. There have also been 10 Falcon Heavy launches during that time and all of them have been successful. The global space industry has become heavily dependent on the Falcon 9 for space access given its high flight rate, reliability and issues with the development of new launch vehicles by other rocket companies. A wide range of countries and companies from around the world have turned to the Falcon 9 for launching their payloads. Some of these clients include companies that compete with SpaceX's Starlink Broadband Constellation and European government organizations. Yesterday's anomaly also has severe implications for human spaceflight. 
the Falcon 9 was scheduled to launch a Crew Dragon spacecraft at the end of July on the Paul Ares Dawn private astronaut mission, followed in mid-August by another Crew Dragon on a crewed mission to deliver four astronauts to the International Space Station for a six-month mission. NASA has relied on SpaceX for accessing the International Space Station given delays and problems with the development of Boeing's glitchy CST-100 Starliner spacecraft, which is now stuck at the space station, putting uncertainty around the fate of two astronauts Sunita Williams and Barry Wilmore who are also stuck on the space station without a reliable spacecraft to bring them back to Earth safely. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.